Hey guys, Ilses here. Um, in today's video, I wanted to talk about specifically the 28 millimeter lens for photography overall, not only street photography, but um, every, every genre of photography. I wanted to go through a few learnings that I've had. These aren't necessarily good points or bad points, just some things that I've realized over the course of time, especially these past three or a little bit more than that, three or more years, um, where I've been using the 28mm as my primary kind of go-to lens um, for photography. One thing that I've realized with the 28 millimeter lens is that obviously because it's a wide lens, um, it's quite easy to get everything in focus. This can be meritable for a few genres, something like perhaps street photography, um, something like landscape photography. You know, especially, you know, if you're liking the scene overall with your own eyes, you're realizing it's quite a nice scene, then it's quite easy to capture that with a 28 millimeter lens um, quite quickly, I would say. You know, take a scene like this where I'm liking the overall vibes of everything, the colors that are happening here and there, the oranges and the whites and the blues in the background. I'm not necessarily selecting something that I like with my eyes. So in this case, I would like to take a picture of the entire scene um, widely, right? You know, and hopefully I'm trying to get everything in focus here. Hoping it all makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But that's all a part of the fun, isn't it? And guys, don't take these images too seriously. You know, I'm doing this for the sake of demonstration. I'll probably be playing a few images um, that I've taken with these methods throughout this video. So have a look at those. You know, one thing that I got used to with the 28 millimeter lens and one thing that I appreciate a lot is the convenience and usually, you know, the 20 millimeter, <laughs> the 28 millimeter lenses are made quite small. Um, there are cameras that are specifically 28 millimeter that are made quite small as well. So they're very convenient. You can take it out of your pocket or your bag soon, take a quick shot and go on with your life, which is amazing, I think. So they're good for all around purposes. But what I noticed is also, you know, when it comes to wider lenses, perhaps it's not typically used for things like portraits, I think. But what I realized is that But um, what I realized is that with a good 28 millimeter lens, there is a little bit more compression and less distortion, especially once you get around like kind of the center-ish part of the frame. And sorry, when I mean center, I mean like, I mean middle, as in like front, middle, back. For the portrait stuff, I'll try to put up a few examples of what I'm what I'm trying to get to. Um, all, all of them I've taken with this camera, uh, the Leica QP, at obviously 28 millimeters. So I hope um, that can be a reference point for you guys. Another tip on taking portraits um, with the 28 millimeter lens is that make sure that like, well, first of all, because you know if you get super close, you're going to distort the face um, of of the person that you're taking a photo of. So keep in mind, you know, when you're taking middle distance, it also means that you're putting more in the frame. What that means is the photo acts less as like a portrait and becomes more of like a quote unquote, like environmental portrait-ish thing where you're, you're putting in elements into the photo other than the human being that you're taking in itself. What that means is I personally think it makes it harder to get a good portrait, but once you get all the things aligned with the environment, perhaps the colors, the contrast, things like that, you get a banger portrait and then it's something that will represent uh, the beauty of that day. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of rushed that opinion because I was almost going to get killed by a car, but what I meant <laughs> was that, um, you know, well, if you're able to integrate the environment and, and where you're at, and everything that's happening within the frame with the person that you're taking a photo of, then that's a banger image and that's a banger portrait. Now, here's a secret. What I personally like about the 20 millimeter lens is that it gives you kind of this creative freedom. It gives you this freedom of getting closer or getting further. Um, and sometimes, you know, what I realize is that the closer and closer you get, you get kind of this weird, like surrealish look um, to the image, which I really like because of that lack of compression and kind of that roundness or 3Dness to the image. See, although this scene looks like nothing, and it probably is, <laughs> but um, you have this red pole here. You, you also have 
this nothingness and this long shadow from the pole. The blue sky and the blue house and the green plants. See, there's a lot we can do here. I think there is. Um, but with something as wide as a 28, you can kind of select what you want within this frame. I think it's just great that sometimes you have the option to move with your feet and choose what you want in the frame that way. Let's uh, try out a few examples of what I mean here. There's so many goddamn cars, man. Jesus fucking Christ. You know, if I wanted to, I could just take an image of this red pole. Kind of like that too, you know? Like that. Dude, give me a fucking break. What is this place? Fucking like the Metropolitan Highway? What's going on? Another thing I realized is to like not shy away from like low f stops because, okay, here's why. I explain that you get mostly everything in focus with 28 millimeters and it's really easy to do that, right? And that is the strength of it, yes, but I think once you do that too many times, the image starts to look really stale. I'll try to deep dive into this a little bit more. Okay, one thing is that you're, you're limiting yourself creatively. There's so many options that you can take with a camera. You can lower the f-stop, you can, you know, hide the ISO, blah, 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 lower the shutter speed, but you're not doing that. And I do advise that people kind of try out with different kinds of settings here. And that's what I mean by to not like shy away from lowering the f-stop. Especially with the 28 mil, I advise you to go to like f2 or sometimes even lower if your camera or lens um, is, is a, it can do that. Because with a 28 millimeter lens, even if you're at like f2.8, sometimes you don't really get kind of the bokeh that you want. So I advise you to really just get down there. And that's also kind of what I meant by like, by saying to get closer and closer and closer and closer, is to try to get that different kind of look and approach. You know, with a 28 mil, you want to fill that frame as much as possible with things of interest or, or elements of interest. And by getting closer and closer, what you're essentially doing is limiting the amount of elements in your frame to things that are hopefully are of interest. And that's kind of the pitfall of the 28 mil mirror lens that I've realized over time um, per, from personal experience, but also from looking at many other people's photographs is that people tend to get lazy, just shoot whatever's in the frame and you're not trying to guide the viewer's eye to what is of interest, and you're not filling the frame with points of interest in the first place. And with that, honestly, just comes a chaotic and dirty frame. So, um, that's what I've learned. Okay, thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you were able to learn something from it. Um, it was fun to make because I'm shooting this outside, although there are so many cars here and I hate it. But nevertheless, like, subscribe, hit the bell, notification down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, Sanara.